Hey y'all, I'm Squid, and I am back with another battle. First off, I would like to apologize uh, for future. The next two weeks, I am finishing up my summer course. I am taking Anatomy and Physiology 2. So uh, most of my time recently has been going to studying and uh, you know just really trying to pass this class because if I do have to take it one more time, I'm probably going to end up punting squirrels in, into a, a river. And that's not something that is, you know smiled at it's more or less frowned upon so uh, I don't want to be frowned upon I don't want to fail my class so I am really buckling down and uh, studying so that's why pretty much over like the next two weeks I may have a lack of upload so I'm just giving you a heads up but uh, I am trying to find free time to find battles and to uh, record as well but I did have a really good UU battle against Logan uh, he's bringing a Luxray, which is actually it's so awesome because I haven't seen that thing in forever. I don't think I've ever versed one competitively. So uh, he also has Reuniclus, which I know from personal experience is a monster because I like using it myself. There's Nidoking, always a huge threat. There is a Don Fan, uh, which has been pushed down to UU, so I have to watch out for it. It's uh, rocks and it's spinning and it's earthquakes. There is a Toxicroak, which is definitely an issue. That thing is a beast, especially after a Swords Dance. And then end game because it does get sucker punch as well. Definitely something to watch out for. And then there's there's Sableye, which I have been seeing way too much of in UU. So uh, I'm gonna have to start figuring out a way to uh, counter that. But I am gonna be bringing Mega Bayonet, my Arcanine, my Noctowl. I'm bringing Sudowoodle with me because I really just I've really just wanted to use it lately. And. Uh, just because it's like never seen. I also have a Tentacruel and I'm bringing a Scarf Machamp. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. And I will get right into it. <clears throat> so now for this matchup I figured I'm just going to lead off with my Bayonet. You know, if I get in the scenario where I can Mega Evolve early, that'll really help me out later on. But he ends up leading off with the Sableye. And now I end up leading off with the Bayonet. I don't want to stay in because I really don't want to be burned because I would like to keep myself at you know well not burn because I have the sneak shot or the shadow sneak I have a uh, pursuit and I have destiny bond and will-o-wisp as well I guess he figured I may have tried to go for the will-o-wisp first turn so he ends up going for a taunt which I don't blame him because his prankster is um is pretty much up and I have to wait until I mega evolve to for my prankster to be active so I go into my arcanine predicting the will-o-wisp and he ends up going into Donovan and I know that flare blitz it's probably one of the best ways to deal with Sableye, so I'm just going to full out go for that. Uh, unfortunately here I am not Life Orbed or else that would have been a 2 hit KO. But what I do here is I figure I'm going to go for another Flare Blitz predicting his rocks because I can spin his rocks away with my Tentacle later if it's necessary. So I'm just going to go for another Flare Blitz and uh, <laughs> unfortunately I predicted wrong here and he ends up going for the Earthquake. Now he does end up uh, taking me out. But he does get a critical hit. I don't know if that mattered. I don't know if he was adamant or if he was more defensive. But either way, it ends up taking down one of my big offensive threats to begin with. But, uh, oh, and also, no, I didn't get the Intimidate off. The Intimidate was on the Sableye. So that was a full power uh, Earthquake right there. So I am going to bring in Tentacool here. And I am, just gonna, I am just going to go for a Scald, knock it out, preventing his rocks altogether. And I'm sure he didn't want to switch anything in to take a Scald. And I figured it was too early for him to to set up with the, the toxic croak here so he wouldn't want to switch that in but he ends up bringing the lux right here and i know these guys usually run physical because i have seen their stats before so i see a really good opportunity to go into uh my sudowoodo here i also know they do get superpower but uh luckily for me which i didn't know at this point but this is a scarf lux ray because he ends up switching out here now this is going to give me an opportunity to set up my rocks as he brings the sable eye back in so I also don't feel like being burned because I don't feel like sitting through stall. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch out into someone who really doesn't mind being burned. Which is another reason why it hurts my team of uh, Arcanine being down because that is a physical attacker I can bring in without having to worry about uh, being burned. So I am going to switch into Hooters, my Noctowl here to take the burn because I do have Psycho Shift on this. Now here I guess I, I wanted to make a risk because if he ends up uh, going for another attack uh, or like recover or well I guess he wouldn't even need to recover or if he wanted to switch out because he can't touch me with his nightshade as he will reveal later on 
or you know in case you wanted to go for a knockoff if he was carrying it I could be able to get a cycle shift off to burn him as well so uh, he's actually gonna go for a willow predicting my switch out well I'm just gonna go for a nightshade uh, I know it's gonna do at least 50% of HP or not 50% 50 hit points of his HP which really isn't gonna be too much and honestly I really can't do much to him and all he can do to me is stall because he does have the nightshade which I am immune to He's also carrying the Taunt, Will-O-Wisp, and Recover, so I do know his whole moveset. Now, I really, I just don't feel like staying in here. I, I know I could probably do some good damage with uh, my Tentacruel, with the Scald, and uh, see how I can whittle him down. Because I can always get a crit, I can always get a burn. But uh, he actually ends up switching out here, uh, just probably just because, because he doesn't want to sit and stall either. So I'm actually going to switch out into my Bayonet here, because I don't want to end up taking a Psychic or a, a Psy Shock and lose my Tentacruel early. Now he is going to go for the Combine, get his boost, and I am just going to go for a, uh, a Mega Evolution and a Shadow Sneak. But I figured I could probably live a Psy Shock, because he's probably going to predict me to go out fearing the Shadow Ball. So, or he might not even want to go for Shadow Ball. Psy Shock really was his best play, because I could have went into Noctowl, and with my Noctowl, I would have been able to be immune to the hit. So, and he would have hit me on the physical side with Psy Shock, so that could have knocked me out potentially. Now, he may be fearing the Destiny Bond here, so he's going to switch. And that's why I really like running Pursuit on Mega Bayonet. Not only is he, you know, base 165 in attack, but uh, he, he forces switches is what I really like. So, I can force the switch, hit him with a, a super effective Pursuit, and now I don't have to worry about that Pokemon later on because he will die to a, uh, a Shadow Sneak. Now, the Sableye does come back in. Unfortunately, I have to deal with this problem. He is going to go for a Taunt uh, because I'm pretty sure naturally Sableye does outspeed Mega Bayonet, if I'm not mistaken. If not, they're probably in a speed tie. So, uh, what he's going to do here is he is going to go for a Will-O-Wisp as uh, what I thought here was I'm just going to go for a, a Sludge Bomb. Honestly, I forgot that uh, it was resisted by ghost typing, so uh, <laughs> that's that's just my own mistake there. And then I'm going to go for a, a Scald here as well. Now, I, after I click Scald, I was like, oh crap, he's probably just going to go into the Toxic Toxicroak, and he's going to be able to just eat that up, he's going to be immune to it, and then I'm going to be in a problem. But uh turns out I actually end up getting the burn, which is really good for me because now... I can just keep scalding. Hopefully, you know, if I end up getting a critical hit, that is going to help me take this guy down. But now I'm stuck in a situation where he can just, you know, roost whisk me down. And that's, I hate that. I honestly, I'm not a fan of that, the stall. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. It's part of the game. It's how people play sometimes. So I really don't want to deal with that. So I'm actually going to switch out here. And I am going to go into uh, my knock tower here just for the fact that uh, I feel like my tentacruel can be useful later on and I'd rather if I'm gonna be stalled down by anything I'd rather it be you know the Noctowl because I am immune to his nightshade but uh, the only bad thing is that he can taunt me and it will stop my roost so I figure I'm just gonna stay in here for a couple turns see if I can nightshade him down low enough to where the burn will end up taking him out while without him or like pretty much trying to force a taunt so like if I can get lucky and I can nightshade him down to a point where he has to choose to recover or to taunt me I, I could most likely just go for the nightshade and knock him out or get him close enough to where burn is going to take him out regardless so that's kind of the plan I was going for here because all he can really do is recover because once again I am immune to his nightshade and he can't burn me because I am already burned so he could just try and you know fumble around with taunts and recover but uh, it's just going to be a little bit of an annoying process here. <clears throat> so uh, that's pretty much what just, is just going to go on. I believe it goes on for about like three turns. And now this guy really wasn't trying to sit in stole either, which is something I, I really like because uh, once again, as you saw, when these two had the same matchup, we both ended up switching out. And uh, that is going to end up happening uh, hopefully sooner than later because uh, <laughs> I'm done waiting around for the stall and everything. But uh, we are going to end up double switching out at the same time. But uh, I still, at this point, I still do not know uh, what his Toxic Rogue is going to do. I need to end up getting rid of that. And at this point, I also don't know that his Luxray is Scarf too. 
So it's going to be uh, kind of interesting how I'm going to end up playing around that. Because I do have a Scarf Pachamp in my back pocket. But the fact that he's Scarfed as well is really going to put a damper on my plan of taking him out. Because I do end up carrying Earthquake, which will end up taking him out eventually. Now, this is where I finally switch out. I was like, alright, I'm done with this. I am just going to switch out and see what I could do. So now I am going to go into Tony Pajamas. And it turns out he's going to switch out as well. See what he wants to go into. And he's going to go into the Lux right here. Now, I do not want to lose my bayonet by any means necessary so I am strictly going to call it back because it turns out it is going to be my win condition and uh, I, I'm just going to switch into uh, the Sudowoodle like I would last time to take the physical hit so here he actually goes for the volt switch and he shows me that he's mixed I'm like alright I know he's mixed we're going to see you know what he's doing he's not showing me any, any kind of life over leftovers life orb anything like that because he would have showed me uh, leftovers because my rocks are up. So he's going to end up going for a uh, an ice beam here. And I did do the calc. I would have lived that, but it's, it's only necessary. <laughs> Every time I use him, he ends up dying to some kind of crit. So that crit is going to end up taking me down. Now, however, I do bring in the Machamp. Now, he probably figured that I am bulky enough to take a hit. So he was going to hit me with something, but I am the Scarf, so I will be able to outspeed him. Knock him out with an Earthquake, so that's a humongous threat down right there. Now here, I probably should have known that he was Scarfed by this point, just by the way he brought it in. Now he's going to go for a Volt Switch. He is going to get a crit back. Actually, not a crit back. He critted me twice. So <laughs> he's going to get another crit here, and he's going to start sacking things off, trying to wear me down with the Volt Switches, which is definitely a good play on his part. You know, this guy's definitely got his plans together on how to handle my Machamp. So the Reuniclus is going to go down. Now, I'm still not in range of him taking me down with a Wild Charge, so he has to go for another Volt Switch here. So as he goes for a Volt Switch, it does phenomenally less amount of damage than it did the first time. And the best part is, now he's going to end up sacking off the, uh, the Sableye, and from this range of health, an Earthquake from a Machamp, a Jolly Machamp, is actually going to take it down, especially since most Sableyes do run specially defensive. So now that's two Pokemon down. Now he is going to switch back in, and I don't want to take another hit because I have this weird feeling that Machamp is going to be very useful later because I needed to take down that Toxicroak. But I am at an extremely low amount of health, so it's going to be really, you know, iffy on if I can, you know, live a hit or not. So he's going to end up going for the Wild Charge, going for the Kill Shot right there, and he is going to end up taking out my Noctowl, but that is going to give me a free switch to go into uh, my Mega Bayonet here. <clears throat> and now from this range of health, I will be able to take him out with a, uh, a Shadow Sneak. However, he does know better, and uh, he is going to switch out straight into his Toxic Croak here, which this is really going to do like no damage. But I didn't feel like it was necessary to go for the Pursuit since I do know that he's Scarfed at this point, and uh, I really don't want to risk that because if I lose uh, my Mega Bayonet here, I have no type of priority that's going to end up taking out that Luxray. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to switch out, go straight into uh, my Tentacle here. And he actually goes for a Swords Dance. I, I was thinking about going for a, uh, a Will-O-Wisp. But if he could have hit me with a Poison Jab, uh, it, it could have taken me out from that range. I do resist it. I am max HP, but it, it just didn't seem worth the risk with my win condition. So I am going to switch out, and I am going to go for an Ice Beam here hoping that it will do a decent amount of damage, and it does, it does a good chunk, but uh, with the plus two after the Swords Dance, the Drain Punch is going to be able to take me out, especially since I'm not running defensive, you know, supportive, any kind of tentacruel, I'm just running an offensive tentacruel, so he is going to get back more than uh, I took away pretty much, plus the Black Sludge to bring him back into green health. Now Machamp has to live a plus two Sucker Punch from 66 health, and he does. Incredible. I have no HP. Well, I think I have like 4 HP investment in this, which is absolutely insane. I end up living it at plus 2. I'm sure this is probably an adamant toxic rogue. And I live it by the skin of my teeth. That is, oh, what a champ. Scarf Machamp coming in so clutch this game. Now he is just going to end up locking himself in with Fire Fang because he knows that he can't do anything about it. He doesn't want to take recoil from uh, the wild charge, and I guess he didn't feel like going for a, a volt switch. 
So I will be able to go into my Mega Bayonet and go for a, uh, a Shadow Sneak or Sneak Shadow, whichever one it is. I always mix them up, but uh, they're exactly the same thing. So that is going to be enough to take it out from that range of health. And that was a really great battle, very intense. Uh, really, that, that damage roll on the, the Sucker Punch, uh, incredible. Because I really have only 4 HP, I mean, uh, 4 EVs in HP, and I'm all, you know, jolly maxed out, attack maxed out. So, uh, really an awesome game. Good game, Logan. And uh, stay tuned for more battles. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.